Hello everyone, welcome to this video on application of lean thinking in a sales process. I have created this content on one of our esteemed viewers request who is handling a large sales portfolio with a pharmaceutical giant. Well, to start with, let's look at a generic sales process flow which begins with identifying our target population or customer segment, followed by starting to generate leads, look for potential opportunities in the set gained through lead generation, attempt value-based selling, that is, convince the customer with logic as to how our product or service is going to add maximum value to their requirement, Issue a quote to take forward the selling process. Negotiate to meet customer requirements without compromising on our own value set or business need. Finally, acquire the customer and make them a part of our revenue pool. However, let me emphasize here that this is just the beginning. We have to make sure that we keep our customers happy and retain them by constantly delivering to their expectations and beyond. Let us be loyal to our customers if we expect them to be loyal to our brands. Having said that, let's try to understand now how lean is applied to sales and marketing. To be very honest, sales and marketing has always taken a back seat in the continuous improvement world. Thanks to the lean practitioners of today who have attempted to push lean beyond manufacturing and have helped businesses make big gains. Steps A and B of the sales flow actually relate to understanding the voice of the customer, that is the customer's perception of our product offering. Steps C and D are about mapping the value stream and then eliminating or reducing non-value adding activities or wastes. Typical non-value adding examples for sales could be collecting a lot of data and then not being able to make much sense out of it, investing resources to generate sales lead for wrong type of customers, misalignment of our sales program compared to the need of the market, creating and publishing reports which do not help much in making informed decisions, or the very common one is multiple sign-offs for simple activities. Getting rid of such wastes would allow us to make a value-based selling attempt. Step E is about creating a non-disruptive flow. Our product or service offering moves freely to the next stage of the sales life cycle. Step F indicates that we should not push our product or service to the customer. Instead, we should supply only what the customer wants and only when they raise a demand for it, thus creating an on-demand culture. Step G is the final stage when we acquire the customer and we get better at it every day to stay in competition. Corresponding to these sales process steps, here we have the principles of lean. Identify value from customer's perspective for steps A and B. Map the value stream for steps C and D. Create flow for step E. Establish pull for step F and seek perfection for step G. In addition to these, below are the best practice concepts required for implementing the lean journey in sales and marketing. Sales Value Stream Mapping It helps organizations to identify how value is created in sales. 5S, which we have already discussed in one of our videos in the Lean series. Well, for sales and marketing, 5S goes beyond just a clean desk for salespeople. It is about what it takes to do the job. It says about customer value maps which are templates for capturing what customers value are, qualification criteria, observable characteristics of a prospect that make them more or less likely to buy, which means 
that in 5S it is not only about keeping a clean desk for a sales personnel. They must look into much more important aspects of sales. For example, qualification criteria that is how we qualify a customer, a prospective customer that yes, this person is probably going to buy what I am trying to sell. Or the second point would be customer value maps which are templates, these are templates available which would help us to capture what exactly is value from a customer's perspective. The third one is lead nurturing and lead generation. So ideally when we talk about a sales process there is an entire sales cycle. However, what Lean suggests is that we should try to differentiate between lead nurturing and lead generation and the actual selling process. The actual selling process has to be a different entity in itself. We should not mix it, mix it up with lead generation and lead nurturing. This way we will be able to focus more while generating leads, nurturing the leads and towards the end of the sales cycle emphasizing only on the selling process. How we are going to sell it to the customer, how we are going to give rebuttals to the objections raised by the customer. The last one is a sales kazan. Kazan is for good. It means we are trying to sell it for good using better and ethical methods. It focuses on simple measures and communication to identify root cause of the problem and accordingly address them. This was all about how we can align our sales process to lean principles and get on to an immensely profitable journey. It sounds very easy in theory, however, when we try to implement it in real life, we would face multiple challenges and patience is the only key here. If we know the concepts clearly in our minds, we will be able to implement it and gradually over a period of time, we will see the gains through it. Hope you liked this video today. Please feel free to share your suggestions and feedback or get in touch with me on LinkedIn. Do subscribe to this channel to stay updated about future videos. Thank you so much for your time today and bye bye.